Welcome, Ella. Thank you. We're very excited to have you here. Yeah, I'm excited to be here. Mm. So you're our favorite Sami artist. Yeah, I am. I am a Sami artist at least. Yeah. So tell us a little bit uh, for people who don't know who Ella Haita is. <laughs> uh, who is Ella? Um, well, where should I start? Mm, I'm 23 years old. <laughs> I'm from Tana in Finnmark, mm -hmm. in northern Norway. I'm an artist and an activist. Okay. So <coughs> that's what I spend my days doing, is trying to change the world yeah. with, with all the uh, different kinds of strategies, mm. both with art and also with words and uh, politics. Yeah. So, so you mentioned artist and activist. Is, mm -hmm. it, is it hard to be one of those things or do you you keep it as one or do you think it's two different things? I mean, it's not completely two different things. Yeah. And in Sami, in the Sami areas, we have a long tradition of, of like artists also taking like a big responsibility for, mm. for telling our, our story and, and fighting the indigenous battles. So I, I feel like I'm, I'm kind of also just following in the footsteps of, of the artists that I looked up to as a young mm -hmm. girl yeah. and so it felt natural but you know sometimes those things collide a bit because mm. uh, especially if you're like a pop artist like me yeah. commercial music um, I have been advised to not be as outspoken okay. um, because like it's, it's provocative and a lot of different people <laughs> don't want to listen to my music because of my opinions and that's that's just what i've chosen to accept and i can't like i can't shut up just because of that yeah i see mm. so <clears throat> but as i understood uh, being a sami is very important for you yeah well i i know nothing else no. that, that has been my whole life obviously yeah um but it's important for me to show a uh, society that I am able to do whatever mm -hmm. and still be a proud Sami because yeah. it has been problematic for, for years and years, especially after such a long oppression mm -hmm. uh, and, and many generations of Samis have been yeah. ashamed of yeah. being Sami. So to me, it's important to show that I'm proud. Yeah. Yeah, thank you for sharing and, and for someone living in Norway for over, over many years. I, I, I think I might agree that there is some stigma, some ta taboo associated with being a, being a Sami or mm -hmm. sometimes looked, looked down upon. Yeah. Uh, tell us, if you want, can you tell us a little bit about, about the Sami culture? What is, what is that? Uh, <clears throat> When you when you talk about being a proud Sami, what, what does that what does that mean to you? Well, to me that means fighting for my language to live on, mm -hmm. like all the eleven different Sami languages are threatened, and uh, on the you there know, are eleven <laughs> Sami. Yeah. Wow, okay. your mind little, is blown little, already. Little, I thought it was one. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 this is authentic talk, so I have to be honest. Yeah, yeah, that. of course. I could have Google. I should have googled that, but I did no, not. No, no, that's fine. Eleven think, languages. Yeah, and, and that's, you want to protect them all. Oh, okay. Well, well, yeah, but I only speak one of them, and yeah. I speak the biggest yeah. language. What is that called then? Northern Sami. Northern Sami. Yeah, okay. and uh, and that's about twenty thousand people talk it, yeah. speak Sami, and mm. Northern Sami, and you know, there's a list. UNESCO has a list of languages that are threatened, and all mm -hmm. these eleven languages are yeah. on that list. Uh, so they're saying basically that my the language of my heart mm. will have have disappeared in in like about hundred years, yeah. and that to <clears> me <throat> is is like a big struggle. And to me, like one of my life missions is to mm. keep this language alive. Yeah, yeah. So that's one yeah. part of being a proud yeah. Sami to yeah. me. Yeah, I, I I identify with that to some some degree, mm -hmm. uh, even though Iceland is is. Uh, very small, uh, and and some might say sometimes threatened by the, keeping keeping their language uh, intact. 
but mm-hmm. I identify with that. Yeah, so, and I've been in Iceland a f- couple of times, and my uh, experience being there is like a lot of similarity also mm-hmm. with the language, like you said. Yeah. Isn't it true that you like make up Icelandic names for like the Beatles and like <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. things like that yeah, yeah. We, and to we, me we, that's just activism yeah, on another uh, level yeah, exactly I mean we, ta- we take it we take it two two steps yeah further. yeah I mean yeah <laughs> like do you have a separate name for McDonald's or is yeah, that almost, almost almost yeah, yeah, yeah. what was the Beatles in Icelandic again the Beatles yeah Beatles of course, of course. Of course. Something yeah, like it's that. obvious <laughs> <laughs> so no, I understand that. So keeping keeping the uh, yeah. language intact is mm. important for you. And w- what are the what are the other things? Oh, it's so much. You know, mm-hmm. um, it's it's an indigenous culture, and yeah. obviously, in at, a modern at, at you could me and the people listening. What what does that yeah. mean? Like the Sami people are the indigenous peoples of Norway, Finland, mm-hmm. uh, Russia, and Sweden. Yeah. So we're like a people without borders. We existed before these borders were set up, but also like in in the modern world, being uh, an indigenous culture, Mm -hmm. we have to adapt and we have to find new ways to express ourselves. And and it comes with some challenges and some things we have lost along the way, Mm. especially after the oppression and and um, and also um, Christianity forcing our religion uh they forced us to leave our religion um so we have lost uh the religion the the sami religion where we where we um how do you say it like our gods were in the nature mm-hmm. you know um that's something we have lost but but we still have a lot left like the language i said and yoik and obviously a lot of knowledge about how to um how to mm, maintain our ecosystems Mm -hmm. and 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 that's that's like common for way of way of living yeah way of living that i that i yeah i i i'm really proud of being Mm -hmm. coming from a a people that have so much knowledge about the details in nature and and, and climate yeah. and I think especially now in a climate crisis we have to look to indigenous peoples yeah. because um, yeah there's a lot lot of knowledge yeah uh, uh, one thing we, it's often uh, often talked about and, and and that is the health status of the of the Sami and and of course very interested in mental health uh, mm-hmm. um, what's that the, the numbers on, on mental problems in, in um, for the Sami Sami yeah. group well, uh, has been often very high. Mm. Uh, do you do you have any idea why that is? Why do why do Sami suffer more than others? Well, I haven't seen like too much uh, um, like numbers on this, so I'm not like not an expert at all. But but my yeah my experience is definitely that. We have challenges um, for many different reasons. I think uh, I have already men- n- mentioned the oppression, mm-hmm. but but obviously a lot of us uh, suffer from these types of, of, of stigma and mm-hmm. and the, and the, and the, the racism mm-hmm. you can experience. There was there was just a, a report coming from Miha mm-hmm. uh, on on the on the. Um, mental health of, of, of youth, <coughs> Sami youth, and it yeah. said that 95% of the youth uh, had had experienced discrimination mm-hmm. uh, for being Sami. Yeah. And I think that obviously impacts people, it impacts mm-hmm. our health. But I think there are different things also. Half of Sami women experience, uh, experience um, how do you say, vol? Like, violence, yeah. yeah, yeah, violence or rape, mm-hmm. such uh during their lifetime and that's also contributing to yeah. to to the mental health state yeah. and yeah just to mention a few things but also we have a challenge of not sharing too much and not being too open mm-hmm. um i think that's been like a defense mechanism after the oppression like to not share yeah. what's what's wrong with us not to share what's happening in our families it's better to shut up and and try to just 
ignore mm. your pain, your own pain, because you don't want to make yourself more vulnerable. Yeah. You don't want to make yourself more vulnerable for for more racism and, and such. So, yeah, there are different challenges. Mm. Yeah. And for you, growing up in uh, Tana, you said, how, how, how was that, growing up in Tana? That was actually really, really nice. Yeah. yeah I, 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 why do I wish, like, growing up, <laughs> you, you get a reindeer when you're four and you travel on it? Or... <laughs> not at all. Yeah, not <laughs> at all. Know. I'm not in the reindeer, uh, or how, how do I say, I'm, I'm, I'm not the reindeer herder from, yeah. from a reindeer herding family. I'm very disappointed. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. Well, that's, this is an example of, oh, like... Okay, I'm joking. Okay. Yeah, 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 it's, yeah. It's, a, it's a joke, but, like... <laughs> It's it's an example of like if people don't know anything about the Sami, it's I'm not saying yeah, yeah, it's a stereotype, mm. and then I feel like a disappointment because I'm no, not fitting no. into the stereotype. No, it's the same with people often yeah. think that, that there are penguins in Iceland or, <laughs> or something, and I and there believe the youth grew up in a yeah in a snow snow cabin or something yeah, yeah, like yeah. that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But but it, I definitely had had a great childhood and mm-hmm. I grew up right by the the Salmon River, yeah. Tana uh, River. And do you, do, do Hedna, young people in Tana, do they grow up like with living in the nature much more than, than others yeah. do? I mean, you, you are brought up also by nature, you're spending a lot of time there. Yeah, I would definitely say so mm-hmm. because I'm, I mean, it's kind of impossible not to live uh, closer to nature because uh, it, there are no towns. Where mm-hmm. I come from, or yeah. it's just small villages, and yeah. and like I I grew up right by the river, and it was natural for us to to um, yeah go fishing every summer. We eat the fish we 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 get, uh, and then and then yeah. Um, yeah, like plucking berries and things like that. You just learn how to be more self sufficient. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and and I I really had a magical childhood because um, it was like a Sami paradise to me. <laughs> like everyone around me spoke Sami, mm-hmm. which is the language of my heart, and 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 the whole world was Sami to me. Yeah. And then when I grew older and I had to move to go to school, um. I you have to move out to Tana to go to uh, high, school, high school. Yeah, and, uh, or you don't have to, but most of us do because yeah. the the it's so limited. Yeah. The the study options. Yeah, yeah, in our hometown. So yeah. yeah, at sixteen I moved away, and then suddenly you know, it hit me so hard that that the rest of the world doesn't necessarily respect me for being me, and doesn't necessarily welcome the Sami culture. I see. Yeah, but so was but that a turning point in your life? When definitely. You, yeah. It was a really. And how did tough. you react on that? It was it was really hard. Because I'm a really like a sensitive person. I've always been, um, not that. Now it feels like I'm I'm putting the blame on myself, but but really I had like teachers and and other students that started like saying racist things and okay. for example what, what did they say that i had to leave the room if i wanted to talk sami mm-hmm. mm, and stuff like that like yeah. it, it just it's, it, it just wasn't welcome you know yeah and like not not like it's, it's hard to pinpoint exactly what it was because it was like mm, just small comments here and there you know mm-hmm. i never got spit in the face or hit hit or anything like that but but it was just these slight comments all the time like Mm -hmm. that made me feel so yeah like i was some kind of um i don't know you were inferior in some way yeah and and there i was like in the middle of sami in the middle of traditional sami land and i was so not feeling at home you know Mm -hmm. after where i moved to is a sami village it's just that so many of the people living there just deny that deny mm-hmm. that fact they don't want to they don't live the way of the sami so. yeah. yeah yeah but so 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 i that was that was a tough transition for me in in life and i think i still so many years after or it's not like a hundred years but like seven is it seven years i don't know yeah something like that and i still have to process this thing mm-hmm. these things because 
a lot of things happened like after that also and I I have concluded that I might have not gotten into this relationship that I got into mm -hmm. this rom my first romantic relationship that was really abusive and and I just I have concluded that I don't think I would find myself in that relationship if I um, felt welcomed mm -hmm. as myself because yeah. it was like something in my whole identity just just vanished yeah. I, it was like my whole yeah. existence it just something inside of me changed and I wasn't able to speak up and and set my own boundaries anymore mm -hmm. because I started to question so such fundamental things yeah uh, inside myself like okay so if I have to start hiding the fact that I'm Sami, mm. what else do I have to leave behind, you know? Yeah. Thank you for sharing about uh, about this uh, experience. Mm. <clears throat> Unfortunate experience. Yeah. So uh, the first relationship was then abusive. Yes. Uh, sexually abusive and then also emotionally abusive. Mm -hmm. So I was with a person that was older than me um and had like this position <laughs> in our social group that that kind of made him have like the upper hand or our our it, it was no equality in our relationship he mm -hmm. was always the one making the calls taking yeah deciding everything and and i was so young and um, i was so inexperienced and uh, every time I like tried to say like I don't want this, this hurts me, or then then I s I very quickly understood that that wasn't relevant for him, mm -hmm. what what I wanted. So yeah, I have some really painful experiences from that time, and our relationship lasted on and off for three years. Yeah. And it was a long time then. Yeah. yeah, it's it's a pretty long time, and I've I've suffered a lot from. Yeah, I I can still get emotional thinking about it because I I, I don't think I can ev can ever like I don't know move completely past that. I I live with these experiences and I have a great life now and I I have a boyfriend of four years mm -hmm. that and we have a, a really nice and healthy relationship, uh, but it's been a really long journey and you know I still grieve myself. I I grieve the fact that. That was my first love, you know, mm. because I, I'm also a really romantic person, you know, as a, as an artist, and obviously I wanted my first uh, experience with love to be mm -hmm. something else than it was. Yeah, so taking you taking you some some time and, and years to uh, yeah to move no move um, move ahead. Yeah. Did you seek any help? Then? Yeah, definitely. After about three years mm -hmm. in this relationship, I, I finally got some help uh, specialized in trauma, mm -hmm. like like um, abusive from coming out from an abusive relationship. So I, I got really good help thanks to my mother. She finally put the pieces together and understood that the re relationship I was in I had to get out of and to be able to get out of it I needed some help mm -hmm. so then I get, got uh, this therapist ex experienced with similar situations and to me it was just such a turning point in life that she told me that this is not my fault mm -hmm. you know yeah. because it's it's just so typical being being in a relationship that like that you start blaming blaming yourself and I did that for a long time mm -hmm. Mm. Does that does this painful experience does it has it reflected in any of the uh, art you've made? Yeah, the whole first album of my band yeah. Isak, you can hear it in most of those songs. Mm -hmm. This this pain of mine. Yeah, <laughs> yeah and um, probably especially the song in comparison. Mm -hmm. um, it has meant a lot of it has meant a lot this song for many other women. Because I start the the song by singing, uh, tell me, did he make you do all the same things that he makes me do for him? Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like this, me speaking to other women, like, are you also experiencing this? Is this my fault? What, what have I done to, yeah. 
mm-hmm. to like deserve to be in this situation and and that has been like really nice sharing that song with so many other women who yeah. have experienced the same yeah did you have any other things would you have to work on as well you, you mentioned earlier um just before we started to shoot you mentioned anxiety mm-hmm. did you that yeah did, did that anxiety start after the relationship or during it or? i think it definitely was inside me all along like i can remember from being a child like i put a lot of pressure on myself <laughs> in school presentation anxiety yeah a yeah. hundred mm-hmm. percent like mm-hmm. and i still have that <laughs> like i remember the first times we got like tests in school mm-hmm. where we were gonna get graded Oh, that was so hard for me. I, I, I like got total panic attacks at school and I could not finish the tests. Yeah. So I had to take them separately alone mm-hmm. at, at like the, the principal's office <laughs> because I, I couldn't deal with the time. And yeah, it just that, that was that was. Yeah. So I think it's always been inside me. Like I said, I'm, I'm definitely a very sensitive person. And then and then it escalated in my teens with mm-hmm. this relationship and in in the school situation yeah. where i didn't feel very welcomed mm-hmm. yeah so it's it's been a journey i'm still on that jur- journey i'm still going to therapy and uh there's so much to learn about yourself and your mental health and yeah and how to like deal with things and mm-hmm. But it's also exciting. Mm. It's, it's exciting seeing the progress I've made, and yeah. so that mo- motivates me. Yeah, that's uh, that's great to hear. Yeah. <laughs> so you want to share anything about the progress you made in therapy? Yeah, I've had a really hard time trusting partners. Mm-hmm. Obviously, after this relationship, um, and yeah, trust issue. Yeah. Yeah, definitely, like a classic trust issue, and. In my relationship that I'm in now, at the start of this relationship, things got very turbulent. And with me not able to trust, being able to trust him, um, I, I, it just, it just, I poisoned re- the relationship with my experiences, mm-hmm. you know. Yeah. And, and suddenly this, this relationship wasn't healthy, you know, mm-hmm. because I brought of all my anxiety into it. And, yeah. and I questioned everything he did. And it actually... Uh, ended up with us breaking up um, after eight months together and and I was so heartbroken (laughs) and then he called me like 12 days later and said okay let's try again and that was like also I feel like we should we should call this podcast the turning points of life because now (laughs) now I just feel like I'm going through all of these turning points but that really was a turning point for me yeah. Uh, realizing that I have to work very hard on myself. I have mm-hmm. to work very hard to understand the patterns mm-hmm. uh, in my... What you, what you brought from earlier relationships. Yes. In a lot of mistrust. And yeah. Like... Yeah, and, and all these traumas, like, I had to learn to understand myself and... Mm. and um... Were you better in setting boundaries or making clear what you really wanted? Yeah, and... yeah but that was really hard, you know, because... Uh, sometimes I started like expecting too much of him because I was so afraid of not being in a uh, in a relationship with equality. I was so mm-hmm. afraid of him dominating me that I started dominating him. You know, yeah. the, so finding that balance was really hard yeah. because I was just so afraid of. You know, you've heard people who have been in abusive relationships that they that starts getting a pattern. They mm-hmm. they 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 don't know anything else. Yeah. And then they, they, they want to have that again and again and again. Mm. And I was so afraid of that being my life that mm-hmm. I would never experience yeah. equal love. So I had to work really hard on like leaving these traumas behind and, and seeing my new boyfriend for him and not projecting all my past experiences on him. Mm-hmm. And I'm really, that's probably my proudest accomplishment, seeing how how trusting i am now yeah. and and really seeing that progress of of how how just uh, more free we both can be because mm-hmm. we trust each other and i won't question him when he goes out with his friends or because i i know that that um he's not he's not what what um 
he's not the guy that I fell in love with the first time. <laughs> there are two different people. Mm -hmm. uh, so I've really made progress there. Mm. Mm. It's great to hear. Yeah. Uh, and he must be happy as well to, to <laughs> hear and yeah. see that you trust him so much. Yeah, I yeah. think so. And and honestly, I'm just so happy to see that things can change. Yeah. Like we just came from a small vacation together and, and we have never been closer and we've never been happier. Like we, we're like best friends and, and boyfriend and girlfriend. And, you know, I've also been afraid that, that this turbulent love is the only kind of love that that keeps the passion going mm -hmm. but luckily that's not the case like oh. you can grow closer together and you can trust each other and, and then also at least my experience is that like the love also mm. grows mm. and that's just so I'm so happy because that was literally my biggest fear mm -hmm. in my teens that I would never experience this yeah and uh, does it influence a little bit the music also you're writing these days yeah yeah, yeah. and is, uh, it, is it more optimistic <laughs> no because that's my problem that i i i don't yeah. want to write optimistic songs <laughs> okay. i just Oof. i just feel like they sound yeah. so cringy yeah. if you go like and you have to <laughs> seek into <laughs> arguments with the boyfriend yeah, yeah. just before you're making, making but this music. is like <sighs> the the big dilemma of an artist yeah. because i think many artists feel this that they are more creative mm -hmm. when they are in pain and when they yeah. are suffering mm. so i can never really yeah. like find complete peace because when i'm happy then i'm not writing yeah. and i'm not completely happy if i'm not writing yeah. so this is also something i have to figure out but mm -hmm. But I'm still writing music. It's just not as good as when I was really sad. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but well, we still get I'm into happy arguments. That I'm not an artist. It's, it seems like a very, but many artists say say, say that. But yeah, uh, and but he's some also a musician. Re re revisit, revisit some of some of earlier experiences or earlier situations. Yes. Because people remember through motions as well, and mm -hmm. and that sounds more healthy than to try try to make yourself experience pain again yeah. and and also you know as an artist you can put yourself in other people's situation and try to write from mm. their perspective and yeah. i think that's also a gift like trying to understand the people around you so mm -hmm. i sometimes yeah try yeah. to write from my friend's perspective or my mm -hmm. parents or yeah. now you live in oslo yes yeah was it hard to to move away from the same area to permanently to to oslo yeah, I felt like that was pretty... Thought, thought you were betraying the cause? Or? Yeah, I felt that. And I'm still feeling that. And, and and I still can feel like my parents waiting for me to return. No. <laughs> <laughs> and the Sami society okay. is waiting my, I for hope me. My, I hope my mother is not listening. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But but at the same time, like, um, do you know Mari Boina? No. This is a shame. Uh, <laughs> she's like the Sami queen, okay. the biggest Sami artist we have. Okay. And she's like my biggest uh, my biggest idol and she tells me I should stay here in Oslo. Yeah. So that's that's compensating for for the expectations of me moving back. Yeah. Because she says I have to stay here on the barricades. Mm. Yeah. yeah. So that's that's what I that's what I Yeah. Stick but you to. Wish, wish the lot, I guess, your home. Yeah, I miss yeah. I miss a lot. And then yeah, that that's a dilemma. Like, especially if if because I'm I'm like really like I really want kids, <laughs> and mm -hmm. like trying to envision bringing up kids here in in, in like out I, outside the Sami areas. Mm -hmm. How am I gonna give them the Sami language? Because yeah. that will be a challenge here. Mm -hmm. So I I definitely think a lot about these things, and nothing is settled. I mean, I can always move back if I want to, mm -hmm. but right now, being an artist, it's it's natural to stay here. Yeah. Here's the network. Here are all the mm -hmm. all the possibilities. So, as an artist, uh, it was pretty laid out for me that I had to yeah. move here. Mm. And maybe some other time in your life, you would want to move back. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah. I I really don't know. Mm. Yeah. I have no I, idea. Expressing yourself. Uh, you you do you do that in Sami and then also in o other languages. Yeah, I write music in in Sami and English, and mm -hmm. then basically the language that I speak most is Nor yeah. Norwegian mm -hmm. because we live in Norway. I'm in Oslo. Most people here 
just yeah. speak Norwegian. So, so yeah, there are three languages in my head constantly. Yeah. And then I, I actually feel like I have a fourth language that is mm-hmm. the Yoik, yeah. which is the traditional way of, of singing in the Sami culture and mm-hmm. and that to so me... a way of, of making sounds so is the, yeah because yeah. there's there's no words in it but but or there could be words but they're mm-hmm. really like secondary yeah. you can just be the sounds that yeah. you make and and that's can you a, give us a example is it yeah i could i would just have to think what i want to yoik today so i really often yoik my grandfather Mm-hmm. Do you want to get to know him? Yeah. Yeah, because when I yoik him, then I I paint a portrait of him. Mm-hmm. The melody in itself, it it will it will um, explain to you his mm-hmm. temperature, his his um, his way of being. Mm-hmm. I actually never met him, but uh, through his yoik, I feel like I I got to know him. So it's a, sp- a spiritual uh, act as well. Yeah, I would definitely say so. Okay, yeah. now you have to close your eyes, or otherwise it would feel weird. Okay, so... Can uh, you close so, your eyes? Yeah, I can close <laughs> my eyes. Yeah. Okay, here comes my grandfather, Isaja. Yeah. <laughs> Wow, that was beautiful. You think so? Yeah. Yeah, I think he was a beautiful person. Mm-hmm. That was uh, that was uh, very interesting. <laughs> Different. Uh, yeah. Uh, very. Very, very nice. And do you, do you then, uh, is it also played with instruments or is it often purely <coughs> just vocal? You know, traditionally it, there were no instruments yeah. or, or we had our drum, our traditional drum, that they were all burnt mm-hmm. uh, with the, Christ, the forcing of Christianity. Mm-hmm. Um, so that was all burnt away. But, but now uh, I have made like a pop version of this yoik. So mm. then... We have like crazy synthesizer and, and, and a lot of drums and different things. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, definitely now we incorporate this traditional way of singing more into modern mm. yeah. modern forms. Yeah. Mm. But the tr- traditional yoik is supposed to be like this, mm-hmm. just between people. Yeah. To I wanted to tell you about my grandfather and the best way I can tell you about him is by yoiking him. Yeah. So that's, that's the traditional format of yeah. yoik. And is that also the form that you ask some person, would you like to know this, this person? And then the other person says yes. And then you, then you I, I don't know how it. much consent there is yeah. necessarily. You would, yeah. but, but um, I, I, you wouldn't have to ask, but, but it's, it's <coughs> like, it's like, um, yeah, it's just natural. It's mm-hmm. just, um, it's just um, another way of expressing yourself yeah. that, that, Unfortunately, it's a threatened form of art, or it, it isn't just a form of art, but it, yeah, fewer and fewer people yoik mm. in this way, unfortunately. Yeah. So I think it's really important for the Sami people to keep yoik because yeah. it's also a unique way of lifting up each other. Mm. It's like the biggest gift you can get is your own yoik. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. Uh, do you? How you talk about the Sami culture is, is inspiring, and I see you have a lot of passion for it. Yeah, so, I do. <laughs> do, you, do you think one, one part of it is like feeling good, good about yourself, uh, is also like accepting where you come from and who you are? Do you think that more Samis uh, or should have an active approach to a uh, little bit taking into consideration where they come from and, and, and do more things to be proud of where that they are Sami? I think definitely my generation is very actively doing so. Yeah, we're, so it's been a change now. Yes, yeah. yes, and I think we're also being more politically involved, mm-hmm. speaking up on behalf of the generations before us that didn't get that op- opportunity. Yeah. You know, a lot of our grandfathers, grandmothers, uh, they were really oppressed and like 
silenced and they they lost their voices and and I think right now we're we're speaking up against that injustice mm-hmm. and and that's important for yeah. many of us and uh, like not only in my generation but like it's it's definitely a change in yeah. the times like now you can definitely feel more yeah. more Samis being proud yeah. of who they are yeah M- more regaining regaining some some uh, regaining status and pride again yeah and I I I I hope that is like common for all people that mm-hmm. we can in this globalized world be more accepting of each other accepting of different cultures because i really just think that diversity it just it's it's only good for everyone <laughs> our, mm-hmm. our our so- societies would be so much poorer mm-hmm. if if we didn't have different cultures around yeah. us mm. yeah just when you're talking about this, uh, it's um, yeah. I think m- many people who come from different cultures or smaller cultures I- identify with that. Yeah, I think a lot of people Side maybe feel like you're an obstacle mm-hmm. if you're not like everyone else, yeah. or like you're. I, I at least feel like that very often. Like mm-hmm. I'm an obstacle <laughs> if I want to speak my own language with my own friends and if I want my future children to go to 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 school and be able to learn mm-hmm. Sami then I'm I'm like a a pain in the ass <laughs> yeah. like a lot of people yeah. I think can feel that but I I just think like I I I really believe that this world is a better place if mm-hmm. we can keep the diversity and if we can keep the different languages and ways of expressing ourselves and mm-hmm. for many of the Samis as we talked about they they uh some of them seek help too late. Uh, they they keep the keep their problems or to or themselves. The, to themselves. Yeah. Uh, do you think there is also a change in that that the Sami culture is more open about about getting help with life challenges and and, and mental yeah. health problems? Yeah, I at least hope so. I think mm-hmm. we have a long way to go still, to yeah. be honest. Yeah. Especially with with like the violence in our culture, or and and. The rape culture; yeah. these are like uh, do, strong you, words, but but. Why do you think it's 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 a high higher there? Why do you think it's still violence culture? I think because it it just they can just keep on like there are no consequences to it, um, unfortunately, and I think that's that's because of this culture we have of not speaking up of not sharing our problems yeah. because you don't want to like cast shame on your your surname mm-hmm. you don't want people to think badly about your family and yeah. so so that's why many people keep things to themselves and obviously if if you're brought up in a culture in a society where like violence can just happen and there are no consequences to it then it's then it's easy to think that Mm -hmm. there won't come to an end to it so we need to like actively Mm -hmm. stop this and and i think that's a long process but but i i think i think we just have to have better options for people Mm -hmm. to actually seek help be able to seek help and better access and also have help that knows sami culture you know Mm therapists that actually understand uh our culture and our ways of expressing ourselves um yeah and and maybe have more more uh options also in sami language Mm. yeah Yeah. things like that i totally agree and and when we look upon it uh, in our company and and we know also just based by research that as I call this, which comes from the culture and speaks the language of the client, is of course in a better place to help. But we struggled as well in in, in uh, acquiring psychologists with Sami culture and with Sami language. Yeah. So it it, it is at least a, <clears throat> it is a, a issue uh, worth addressing. Definitely, but but I have also, it has also been 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 said that. Um, with this problem of you you don't want to expose yourself mm-hmm. to you don't want to expose your family 
then it's it can also be hard for Sami people to seek help from other Sami people because our societies are so small and we're so yeah. used to if like it's the same the same yeah, yeah so that's same. another challenge like yeah. I think some people would avoid go to mm. another Sami person like a, a yeah. seek help from a Sami therapist yeah, if if, the, if there is like the, this threat is the anonymity yeah, yeah. Mm. so so there are very yeah a lot of different challenges but Mm. i i just so hope that we will see a change in that and yeah because it 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 really is heartbreaking that half of sami women will experience uh violence during Mm. their lifetime that's just yeah that's just yeah that's just devastating Mm. Uh, yourself you're saying that you are much better place today than you were and and you are also going to therapy now yes Uh, um, you keep that as a as a regular activity yes uh, I, I, <coughs> I have gone to therapy like on and off yeah um, searching for the right therapist mm-hmm. <laughs> so now I'm going to a new one <laughs> uh, and um, yeah I, I, I would say that I'm definitely in a better place but I'm not gonna like lie and say that I'm I'm healthy as can be <laughs> because no. I, I definitely have my 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 own challenges with my m- mental health and being a public person with such uh, strong opinions and being so opinionated and um, speaking up in media about these really uh, how should I say like betent like mm, I'm I'm really get getting into debates that are really S- polarized sensitive, sensitive yeah issues. really sensitive issues. <laughs> like racism um for example and and people really can express a lot of hate towards me Mm -hmm. and that has been hard the past two weeks for me because i've been really active in these debates uh, in different newspapers and in on television Mm. so i have experienced a lot of that recently and and i think I can seem like I'm really strong and I'm really holding up well and it's not affecting me and and to some degree it's not affecting me because I'm kind of used to it by now being a public person with these opinions but it gets to me sometimes you know and and in the past couple week couple of weeks it it has been so much Mm -hmm. and constant that it has affected my my mental health and how i feel about myself and mm-hmm. yeah what strategies are you using or, or what are you using to to um, uh, to keep you in a, in the best possible shape well what do you do do you nature must be a part of it yeah but i find it hard to like have the same relationship with my surroundings mm-hmm here because Mm. here you have to like leave town and (coughs) go for walks like Mm -hmm. where there are a hundred different other people walking and it's just not the same kind of peace alone with the river like not alone yeah Yeah. and that's what i'm kind of used to so um, for me it's always been really important to have those people Mm -hmm. that i can share my experience and my feelings with good relations yeah Yeah, good relations and i have it's just that I'm so emotional and so sensitive that I can I can be a burden for people, you yeah. know. So that's why I also have to go to therapy. <laughs> so <laughs> so to, that I spread the burden. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I know, but literally. Yeah. Um, do you take much place with friends or do you or, or do I you volatile so. emotions you think? Or? I I like to think that I'm a good listener too mm-hmm. and that I'm a, I'm a good support for my friends also. I'm a really yeah. loyal person like mm-hmm. if you're in trouble I will leave drop everything I have and I will come. Um but I think that I definitely take up a lot of space and mm-hmm. I think that's just a part of who I am and I'll just have to work work with that. Yeah. I see. Yeah, so relations, nature, and uh, are the other things would you would you try to do? Well, music is and has mm-hmm. always been the most important therapy for me. Yeah, I really had such a hard time of understanding how other people function mm-hmm. if they do not write music. Because yeah. to me, when I'm really like at my darkest mm-hmm. place, yeah. then the only thing my body is able to do is producing music, uh-huh. and and. 
you know, like when you're crying or like even as a child, you make so much noise when you're sad. You have to just get the pain out. And that's exactly how I feel with making music. Mm -hmm. Like I get I, with the sound I'm making, I will heal myself. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so music is, is important for you, as yeah. you mentioned. And, and are you better in better in recognizing your old patterns? Are you, do you have a better strategy for that? Seeing, ah, oh, okay, Ella, now you're acting a little bit like you did before. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah I, I, I hope so. I think so. Uh, if my boyfriend is listening, I hope he would mm -hmm. agree. But yeah, definitely, I'm better at recognizing those. But... I'm still learning, you know, mm -hmm. I still fall back sometimes and, yeah. and, you know, act childish and yeah. <laughs> so I, I, I'm still in that process and I hope that I will keep making progress. Mm -hmm. I'm really motivated to do that. Yeah. yeah. So what would you think would be your, when it comes to working on yourself since you're so open and mm -hmm. reflective about that? What do you think is going to be your largest challenge? Then? Oh. Good question. Um, to me, it still is separating right from wrong. After it, this relationship I had, mm -hmm. you know, setting my own boundaries, all of that. It's just really hard for me to know when I'm going too far or when I'm not protecting myself enough. Yeah, no, you know, knowing where the limit is. Yeah, knowing where yeah. the limit is. And, and every time I get into a conflict or a fight in life, be if, if it's with my parents my sister my boyfriend my friends anything I always just I just feel like I get so stuck in my own head like how how are we supposed to <laughs> move from here when you say this and I say this and we're like not agreeing and mm -hmm. I think that's because I also at a really young age I I started to use my vocabulary and my my language to to get what i wanted mm -hmm. <laughs> that now i'm being really honest like i i definitely think that i at times have have been like sort of manipulating in school i remember like i i used to talk my teachers into getting me better grades mm -hmm. <laughs> like you understand yeah. what i mean yeah. like some of us obviously have yeah. the gift of speaking and, and talking yeah. and and that to me i'm i'm really conscious so about can, that you can be persuasive and get, yes you can squeeze out things you want exactly and i don't want to be that person yeah. why not you get to, uh, because i i want equality good, good grades good, good <laughs> <laughs> yeah okay i don't regret that <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> That was good, but then, uh, but then in relationships with my boyfriend and with my friends and family, I want yeah. equal equal relationships. I want people to be heard. I want people to feel comfortable. I want people to feel like they can can be their voices matter as mm -hmm. much, you know. So I have been really conscious about this that I do not want to dominate other people. I do not want to yeah. manipulate. So. I find it so hard sometimes yeah. in conflicts to know what is right mm -hmm. and what is wrong because I can feel so strongly that yeah. I am right, but yeah. I don't want to just convince you that I'm right because no. you obviously also have a strong feeling, you know? So connected to your, like, uh, as I understand it, it's getting a cortex or, or like uh, understanding when, you, uh, as, you're as you're saying, when you're not right or wrong and, ho and how to act from that. Yes. Uh, do you think that's that's also based from your earlier negative experience by being yes. in a violent relationship? Yeah. When someone else persuade you that you were wrong when exactly. you were right? Yeah. Are you afraid of being in those same steps? I'm as? really afraid of that yeah. because obviously that 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 was a horrible experience mm -hmm. and 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 so physically yeah. being abused like I mm. I, I have vivid memories of myself saying like i do not want you to touch me here yeah. and then him still convincing me to to let him ha, let yeah. him do so um how painful that is to live with afterwards mm -hmm. uh how shameful i felt and how dirty and and yeah, yeah I, I just felt like i was crushed inside really so so it's still hard for me in all relationships to know 
when are people like um mm -hmm. if people are using <clears throat> me yeah or when am i using people you know it, yeah. this is just a fine line like yeah. i i don't want to be that person yeah. So so sometimes I get so afraid mm. of of convincing people to to be, agree with me that I'm just I just shut up and I sit like this. Yeah. Oh, I don't know what to do <laughs> anymore. Yeah. Does the psychologist say that you put maybe too high pressure on yourself? Yes, and yeah. everyone says that. But but how do you like not yeah. put pressure on yourself? Yeah, I've always done that. Mm. I see, but yeah, th thank you for sharing and and and. Uh, <laughs> Do you don't have any uh, advice? <laughs> That's that. Then we have to have another podcast. <laughs> okay, okay, I will come back. No, I, I think I think uh, I think uh, I think it's very good that you have come so far. Yeah. I think uh, with this challenge and how reflective you are about about all the processes which are happening, so mm -hmm. it appears to me that you've done a great job. Yeah. Uh, Thanks. And, and then you're in a better place today, and you're open about your negative experiences, mm -hmm. how how that has affected you. But I I, I think uh, uh, since you ask, uh, but I, I based on the little I know, <laughs> I think it's so important that you you make a differences between what between your early experience, what yeah. your ex boyfriend did, which was horrible, and also thinking that even though you might a little manipulative <laughs> to someone and buying you an extra cola or whatever that is that's never gonna be in any comparison yeah. to what was happened to you Aww. so so i think that's that's the vice yeah and and uh, i think all people might in some situations take exactly. like over persuade someone else yeah. to to getting that extra cola or yeah. getting a little bit the seat they wanted or something but mm -hmm. but that's not the same as, as being being abusive, while abusive. Yeah. Yeah. so i think that's that's um that's important but easier said than done as we talked about mm. one thing is understanding it rationally and then implementing something in your own life is is very different mm. Mm. but uh, that was nice to hear mm. just that you think that because that's also what i've been thinking like uh, to some degree everyone sometimes persuades each other and has these manipulative techniques they use in life but yeah. but but it, it doesn't mean that you're like a super horrible person no and i think maybe just how people use in conversation the word manipulative isn't maybe manipulative uh, mm. like manipulative is a little bit a strong term but uh, yeah <clears throat> But I don't know, you might be manipulated. Oh, <laughs> but, uh, but, so <laughs> this I is not where I wanted to end <laughs> this conversation. No, no, no. I'm joking. I'm sure I'm sure I'm sure you're not. But uh but uh, yeah, people people a little bit fighting for the cause or, or getting that extra slice of pizza, uh, that doesn't have to be the worst thing. Yeah, you know? like innocent things. Yeah. 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 And and I think when people are in relationships if they if they uh, argue most people want to be want to be right. Yeah. Especially in the heat of the moment. Yes. Uh, yeah. Very. Yeah. But that I've been practicing on mm. and like taking breaks in fights yeah. and then coming back when you're not mm -hmm. like fired up because yeah. then you can say horrible things just to win. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So so very exciting uh, what you're doing, Ella. Uh, what is happening on on your next music production are you are you gonna make more music yeah we're we're in stud in the studio now making new music mm -hmm. um we released an album this year or early in 2021 yeah. so that's a lot of work making mm -hmm. an album so at this point i'm not like really in in that mode i just want to make music and see yeah. what it what happens yeah um but lately it has been a lot of work with my book i've just released a book called that for modrita that's mm -hmm. why you have to know i'm a sami mm -hmm. and um yeah trying to to be uh, to be active in 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 politics and different things so yeah. and i'm also re uh recording a movie mm -hmm. or so i'm wow, i'm, I'm stepping, stepping into up my acting career finally yeah. i've been really looking forward to that for a long time and yeah. so i'm i'm in a movie production now that i will finish in january yeah so there are a lot well, of different things a lot of different projects yes yeah. 
Uh, very exciting to hear. Uh, mm -hmm. It's been wonderful to have have you here. Yeah, it's great fun. <laughs> yeah, and, uh, I felt like I overshared, no, but but I I hope it helps somebody. I, I think I think you did did very well, and it was great to have you here. Thank you.